why, why don't we open up for questions now? There's six of us here. We have got Gordy Tongs, our local ufologist. He's been in, into this since over 50 years, you know. So, and uh, we, we've got a few other people here. And Rolf Epper, he's had experiences. He's 85 since Switzerland in 1944. <laughs> So uh, who'd like to start off? Questions, comments, Gordy? Do you, do you have something like that? Yeah. Uh, Desta, last time you were in Vancouver, uh, you said that uh, uh, many of these entities uh, or uh, these things that are related to UFOs could be deceptive. That uh, uh, You said that they are liars. Um, uh, why did you say that? Why did you come to that conclusion? Um, well, so uh, when I was there, so that was a year ago, I was, I was really, okay, let me think. So we're 2020. So last year, I had just come back from the Manchester conference. So I, I'm friends with the people that put that conference on, one of them yeah. is Steve Mara. And um, I'd spent a lot of time with him, like the, the week before the conference, I was with him for the whole week. And, um, and he's a, he's like a, um, he's an investigator. So he's like a UFO investigator, yeah. but he's also a um, parapsychologist. So he's been dealing with hauntings and, you know, trying to get things out of people's houses and trying to, to do all that stuff for his whole entire life. Yeah. And so I had had, and I had been channeling for, for, you know, a handful of years at that time or whatever. And um, I, I hadn't had any bad experiences channeling, but I've had a couple of bad experiences experiences while I was doing my healing um, work on people. And so I guess I was just listening to his interpretation of what like a John Keel, Jacques Vallée and yeah. um, those kind of people that would, that would be saying that a, like, what is exactly, what is the phenomena? And is it something that is always masking itself to you? And so it could be, you know, and I've heard many things where people have been channeling something for 10 years. They were very close to this being having yeah. conversations with it every single day. And then after 10 years, it turns around and says, ha ha, I'm not this, I'm this. And it's the bad thing. <laughs> yeah. I know, um, uh, I know uh, the, there's a book called The Trickster and the Paranormal. And that book is all about like the trickster. So, and, and so I guess the, the subject for that whole entire year, I had kind of stopped channeling um, because you know, so, so a lot of people have the, the thought that be careful when you're channeling because you don't know if it's something that's lying to you, that's lying to you all the time. Every, and that's why I always say, I have no idea if it, it's going to say it's an ET. I don't know if there even is ETs. I, I think that I believe that there is ETs. I believe that there's spirits and ghosts and all these different things. That's what I believe. But I also looked into this trickster phenomena enough and know that these a lot of these things lie. So Steve Mara told me a lot of stories about how these, um, you know, when uh, mediums or people that are channeling or whatever are involved in these um, uh, like hauntings and a medium will come and try helping and they'll say that, oh, you know, it's a, it looks like a little girl. You think it's a little girl that's dead that died in the house and really it's not. It's like some very negative dark being that's masquerading as a little girl. So when yeah. the little kids come into the house, it attaches itself to them. So I, I start and I knew things. I knew all this stuff before, but I guess I was never worried or um, concerned at all with my channeling that I could ever attract something bad because I thought because I had the positive intention that I wouldn't that that was enough to protect me but there's many many books that I've read also that say that no matter how much protection you can have you don't know what this thing is so you should be very careful so because I had just spent so much time with Steve before I came to uh, Vancouver last time I was really in the mindset that you really don't know what this stuff is. And I was reading John Keel and more of the old Jacques Vallée stuff where it's just like, you know, you think that it's all love and light. And that's something that Steve would say, right? That that is something that they say in their, in their talks. You think it's all love and light, but you don't know if it's something that's pretending to be love and light. So I, I guess mm -hmm. I kind of like stopped channeling and, and was more cautious about connecting with things because I don't think that any of us know what exactly these things are. Um, and so I, you know, yeah, spent the year being more cautious and looking more into these things mm. and the old like John D and, and, and Alistair Crowley stuff where it's like, they're trying to distinguish between, 
you know, binding a demon and trying to connect with an angel. So even from the 1500s, you, you kind of look at what the, the similarities are with now with what these things are and how they're lying. They were lying to John D when they were in 1550, yeah. when they were trying to, you know, connect with these angels and they were saying, you know, swap wives with him and Edward Kelly, right? <laughs> yeah. The being that they thought was Archangel Michael that said that it was Archangel Michael that they thought they were talking to told them to swap wives. And uh, the wives were not very happy with that. And they did it. And then after the being said it wasn't who, who, who they said he was. So it's like they, they, there is that aspect where the things trick themselves. And that's why I, I, I uh, started channeling again. But with the, uh, with the um, more of a cautious and more of a, I can't get that connected to what the thing says it is because you don't know if it's telling the truth or not. And, yeah. and the whole thing is if it's, I think having a good message, it's more about the message and, and it always, for me, it's always about a, a positive message. So I don't think that there's anything negative in me continuing to do this unless you feel something bad. And I can, I think I'm kind of okay with how it feels. Like, I think I'm okay with, you know, determining the, I don't know how it feels. And so if it was feeling bad, I would stop doing it and knowing and having this background, knowing that there are uh, many things that are deceiving you and just trying to communicate with people or connect to people or whatever. And so you have to be careful. Um, but yeah, so anyways, <laughs> that's why I was, I was pretty, obs not obsessed, but I was pretty into that aspect when I was at that last meetup um, because I, and I had completely stopped channeling at that point because I yeah. was more scared and worried. But um, so I guess, you know, in the year, my, 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 opinions change every <laughs> every couple of months maybe <laughs> for sure every year but uh, that, that's where i was in that at that point <laughs> okay so right now you're not afraid i'm not a, nice i'm not a, yeah i'm not afraid i i don't even know if i was that afraid that i was just i didn't want to do it because i didn't know how i thought mm. it felt how you were supposed to properly protect yourself but i think that a lot of people just shut it down if it feels like something bad is happening. And I guess if that happened, I might be scared enough that I wouldn't do it anymore, but I've never been, I've never had a problem when I was channeling. And that's the thing is I felt like it makes me feel a lot better. And I think I get good information for myself, even if I never share it with anyone, but I think it's worth me doing it until something happens. If anything ever happens that scares me enough to not do it, but that's never happened. So it, I don't think I'm like invincible and so protected and I know what the hell I'm doing enough that nothing's ever going to come in. But I think that nothing ever has bad happened. So I'm going to keep doing it with the caution and um, assumption that if anything happens, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll maybe stop at that time or, or try and find help or something until your curiosity is overwhelmed by your fright, you keep on going. Yeah. And I can see that in, in me if I, I don't have those experiences. But just as a, another human being, I can't imagine us wanting to put ourselves in danger. And the only time we might is if we had a curiosity that's insatiable enough to try. But that's a balance you're going to have to, you know, decide for yourself as you go. It's very interesting now. Yeah. Thank you. Um, um, uh, Desta, in uh, Winnipeg, there's a lot of sightings. There was a, a Civic a CTV special on all the sightings in Manitoba over the years. Uh, did you ever see that broadcast uh, about the Manitoba? That it was just a place where a lot of people are seeing UFOs. Well, I know the Falcon Lake one is a big one. And uh, Grant and I actually in a couple of days have a, um, some guys uh, doing a documentary that are here to film some of those like where the Charlie Red Star was, the Falcon Lake sighting, a handful of the sightings that are the big sightings around this area. And we're going to like take them around and kind of like show them some of those big ones. But uh, I didn't, I didn't see the, is that a recent documentary? Uh, it wasn't a documentary. It was just a uh, CTV news report about uh, many, many sightings. You could probably look it up on YouTube. Just type in Manitoba CTV uh, UFO uh, increase of sightings. Um, I don't think it's that old. But um, you've heard of David Pilates? Of course. Uh, Miss in 411. Mm -hmm. He's saying that there's a connection with a lot of people seeing lights in the sky and people disappearing. And I don't know if that's the case in Manitoba, but here in British Columbia, in the Kamloops Merritt area, there's been a lot of sightings. I had a friend up there that was camping 
and uh, he said with his friends, they saw hundreds of UFOs one evening. Uh, there were uh, stories of Bigfoot uh, creatures in the area as well. But there's, there, are getting, there is getting to be more reports of people disappearing. So David Pilates is saying that in areas where there's a lot of UFO lights or um, lights in the sky, there seems to be a relationship with people disappearing. Uh, have you heard about that in, when, uh, in, um, in Manitoba? Oh, um, no, I mean, I followed, um, I haven't for the last, you know, year at least, or, or maybe more, but I, I was a huge uh, David Pilates, like following that stuff. I've seen him speak a couple of yeah. times. And I haven't read the books. I've watched his movies and I used to watch all everything on coast to coast and everything on YouTube. You know, I spent every night before I went to bed for like an entire year. I think I spent an hour or two listening to everything. Those sightings are, are, um, are not sightings. Those, uh, like, um, uh, cases are fascinating. So I, I definitely listen to, um, you know, many, okay. many of them. And I do know that they do that like in the national parks. And, and I'll say one thing about Steve Mara again, um, who was, who I was just talking about is, um, I don't know if I, I thought I talked about this maybe last time, but you know, there's the map, there's the template map that you can get. That's um, right. Yeah. That goes over Google, Google earth that shows the magnetic anomalies. And Steve is the one that made the, or I think he is, um, that made the connection and the correlation with a lot of the um, missing 411 cases and positive magnetic anomaly places on the earth. So a lot of the like Yellowstone, um, a lot of the big parks where all these missing cases are, are the purple, like the positive, the most positive magnetic anomalies that he thinks is associated then with paranormal activity. And, um, and we, and I spent a week full time, like a week, eight hours a day, um, tracking every single UFO site I could think of, like all the big ones, any to any time, whether it was like, or like ancient sites or um, experiencers or yeah. anything that I could track all over the whole world and trying to plot to see if those magnetic anomalies were very yeah. um, associated with it. So I know that those places are associated with it and that is it, but in definitely in Manitoba, I don't know that many people that have had many sightings here and especially missing people in Manitoba. I'm, I'm, I don't, I don't know. Okay. There. Because uh, Pilates said that one of the uh, chief cluster areas where people are disappearing in the States is Yosemite National Park. Mm -hmm. And so um, I did some uh, research online about maybe why it's happening there. And uh, it's something that Pilates didn't mention, but uh, I, at one time, it wasn't a national park. It was a place where Indians used to live. That was their happy hunting ground. Oh, and, and when the government uh, uh, saw this land and saw it was very beautiful and, you know, it was, you know, there was beautiful um, uh, trees, mountains, um, uh, there's uh, an abundance of game, fish, and so on. Uh, the government wanted this land, so they forced the, they, they pressured the um, Indians to relocate. And they didn't want to relocate at all. Uh, and they were forced off the land. And there was, uh, uh, let's say, people uh, getting killed. I mean, uh, the chief's son uh, was killed. And so, like uh, you, you mentioned uh, John Keel and um, uh, the uh, Point Pleasant, West Virginia Mothman case. Well, same thing there. There was a, a, a chief cornstalk and his uh, people were not treated very well and driven off the land or kept in captivity or killed. And they cursed the land. They cursed the Point Pleasant area. Ha apparently, that also happened uh, at uh, Yosemite. The land was cursed by the Indians. And so there could be a relationship where uh, people are mistreated, where, like uh, hauntings, for instance. Uh, I, I've been uh, researching hauntings for quite a few years. I was involved with uh, Vancouver Paranormal. And some of the places that are haunted have associations with suicide, murder, witchcraft, um, uh, spiritualism, makes, and so on. Makes sense. And so uh, there could be a relationship. Like Manitoba is an Indian name. Mm -hmm. Saskatchewan is an Indian name. And, you know, Grant, you know, Grant, uh, uh, um, Brian, he said yeah. his family. Yeah. Uh, no, uh, no, not not Grant. Uh, oh, Doug, our, our Grant, Doug, Grant Doug, from yeah, our UFO meetup group. Yeah, he's from yeah, Saskatchewan. He lived, in, uh, lived in Saskatchewan, and yeah. as a incredible a young person, alien he was uh, his family, a Hutterite family, bought uh, 
land or acquired land. And there was a lot of paranormal uh, phenomena happening on this land. Eventually, uh, as a child, uh, Doug got, uh, or Grant got uh, abducted many times. Sometimes he disappeared from his home. Uh, very there were, negative uh, experiences too. All his yeah, life was very negative on the Yeah, way. there were UFO activity over the house. Uh, there was a patch of land where the animals, uh, like a circle of land that these, and these animals would not, you know, go on this land, this spot. But, but uh, so the, I think there could be a possible relationship with certain types of territory land. Maybe this land was owned by people that were average, you know, uh, Aboriginal people are into various forms of spirituality, shamanism, and so on. And there is a concept of curses in certain mm -hmm. cultures that if you harm our people, we will, yeah, we will curse your land, we'll curse. Uh, so it could be a relationship. Also in Scotland, I was uh, hitchhiking in Scotland. I got picked up by a, a fellow. And he was mentioning that certain families in Scotland had what was called sixth sense Um and maybe in your family, you're, you, you have an Irish background or Scottish? Uh, very small amount of Irish, but yes, very small. Okay, uh, so I was told by this, this fellow that picked me up that there are certain people in Ireland, uh, Scotland, uh, but I, I would say the case in other um, uh, Celtic countries, that they're born in a certain family. And remember um, Jacques Vallée mentioned um, uh, the Reverend Robert Kirk, he wrote an essay called A Secret Commonwealth. It's in his, this is mentioned in uh, Valley's book, Passport to Magonia. Okay. I think we should relate this to a question for Dessa, right? Dessa is a guest speaker. Should you give okay. a question the, for the, Dessa? The question is, um, if, if you, since you were a child, have had all these paranormal experiences, uh, you can see things that other people uh, can't see, that is a, uh, um, that is a sign like the Reverend Robert Kurt, that he had the sixth sense. He was the seventh son in a Scottish family. So he had this ability to see into the realm of fairies. And he, he discovered that fairies uh, had a spirituality and kind of a belief system that, um, okay, was associated with uh, paganism. Uh, they had an, uh, let's say, um, they had a, a, a aversion to the things of God. And so, Kirk discovered that they had a fallen nature. And when he tried to expose this and write about it in his essay, The Secret Commonwealth, uh, he got abducted. He got abducted and it, it led to his uh, final death. Uh, Who he, abducted him? He, uh, People? This, he claimed the fairies. Oh. So what, what's uh, your question for Desta then, Gordy? Well, with, I'm just saying that there could be a connection between your ancestry and why you're seeing all these things. Like the Reverend Kirk, Kirk had the same thing. Well, that's what she so, was saying. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah so um, um, it's just a comment. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, yeah, Makes totally. Sense, so. Yeah, and, and interesting. And um, yeah, even what we were saying before with the reincarnation thing is you got to wonder if you choose to go because you want to have the experiences and that would make sense in this specific family. I would think yeah. it's more that than as opposed to you get born and it's because of the DNA that then the things happen to your family. I think that we, we definitely have a choice and whether, like, you know, I, I, I have um, channeled and uh, had some past life regression um, work done <laughs> that, I did, that I did to myself, but yeah. um, that, that do, and, and again, and, and um, I even take it all with a grain of salt, but I mean, um, I have had many um, messages about my past lives and it and it seems like doing this kind of thing where I'm connected and I think anyone can be connected I don't think it's a gift or anything I think that if you work on it for not even that long anyone can do you know and anything but I think that I'm doing it now because I have done it in past lives as well and I think that it's like themes that run through past lives because you can't do everything in one life, especially if there's an infinite amount of time, you know, if we're, if we're uh, reincarnating an infinite amount of time, like, you know, different times because there's an infinite amount of time out there, then um, I think that it's not like every life you learn one lesson and then you never have to learn it again because then in a couple, you know, centuries, you'd be done all the lessons that there is. So, um, so my personal messages about my own past lives have been that, 
like being um, reading, divining futures or, you know, being an oracle or being a shaman, those kind of things run through this. So I, I also think that maybe that's part of just the, the level that, and not in a hierarchical way, but in a, like, that's just the um, theme that I yeah. wish to express in the last handful or I don't know, 10 or a hundred or a thousand or million, I don't know, lives that, that, that being connected and, and being able to communicate with the other side kind of thing is just part of what I'm doing now. And, and, and anyone, y'all could have done that already. And maybe, you know, a hundred years ago, a million years ago, it's just the theme that happens to be what I'm doing now. And, and it's, um, so I think I'm, so before I came into this world, knowing that I had just d done that, but in a different way, in a different community, in a different religion, in a different, you know, cultural background, I have done that in, in other lives. And I think that you just kind of carry on because you're not quite finished with learning whatever lessons are associated with why ever you choose to yeah. do stuff like this. So, so again, yeah. So, so if it's because it's seventh son of a seventh son kind of thing, or <laughs> because it's like your consciousness string of what you need to learn for this chunk of, of time. Um, yeah, I totally, yeah, it's really interesting. And I yeah. love the Irish and Celtic uh, backgrounds and, and everything they think. And well, I think that that's why those things come around. The fairies and those things are coming around because they are real and, and it's just different ways of expressing um, different entities over, you know, time. So you we don't have a lot of regret at all. Has any other we'll questions, like Rolf or Zachary or Barry? Any comments, questions? So you, you don't have any regret about where you are in life and what you've gone through. You are quite resigned to the fact that this has just happened to you. And, and that's interesting because no matter what you do, your experiences are going to be with you for the rest of your life. And if you're comfortable with those experiences, it's most important. I will listen to this and I don't have a lot of, I sort of can relate, don't have a lot of experiences myself. I'm almost envious of you. And yet what you go through, the same as with Jeff, another experiencer that Brian knows and I, um, what he's gone through, I envy him for that. But he struggles with it too, as I'm sure you do. It can't be easy to explain to a bunch of fools like us, to anybody, <laughs> you know, even to your grandmother, you have to probably explain things, what you experience and listen to what she has. That's tough to do. So I'm just saying bravo and thank God you're, you're, you're putting it out there for any, and I just feel like I'm an average show for any of us to see. So thank you very much. Well, thank you. You're well, welcome. I think, again, I think that anyone is, these experiences are open for everyone to have. And I can notice in my own life that when I, and the hypnagogic thing is a, is a good example because I haven't had one for a while, but um, there's sometimes when I have them every night for months. And I noticed that if I think about it before I go to sleep, if I'm talking about it or like tonight, because we're talking about it right now, I bet I'll yeah. have one tomorrow morning. Yeah. And I think that again, this is why I do not think that like, I think that we're all the same here, but I, I think I have experience of some of these things. So I'm in, I'm relaying them in maybe a different way, but I, I really think that if you, spend all day thinking about something if you really want to see a ufo and you spend all day thinking about it all night thinking about it and you really yeah. want to see it enough to the point of where you're saying who i don't like whatever you believe in my ghosts my angels my guides my spirit my team my whoever i want to see this and if you do that enough and go outside and sit there and meditate and look at the sky for a couple hours a night you'll see one i think yeah. that just the fact that we're talking about this i'll have the hypnotic thing tonight and so i think that you just have to anyone who you don't have i it, personally, I, I really think that if you really want something, you just think about it enough. And if that's what's taking up all your thoughts, it'll happen because you're bringing it towards yourself. And, and if you want it to happen, it's because it's supposed to happen. Otherwise, it would be like some of, you know, normal people who have no idea what we're talking about. They don't want to see a UFO. They don't know anything about UFOs. They're never going to see a UFO, right? <laughs> if you really, really want to see uh, your dead grandmother, think about it enough and she's going to come to you one night. You really want to see a UFO, think about it enough and, and, and try. If you try, I think all of this stuff is just, it's a part of a focused intention that most people think that they, you need to have an ability, even me channeling, I taught myself to channel. I don't, and not by taking a course, by trying to do it enough that I just spent a ton of time trying to figure out how to do it. And then I started doing it. So I think that all of this stuff is just, has nothing to do with abilities or 
pasts or luck or being born into a seventh son of a seventh son. I think you just want to do it. You okay. want to have the experience, focus your, your thing, think about it all the time, and then be open enough to let these things happen. And I think that is how things happen. And I think if you believe it, maybe it's part of your belief system. And maybe I believe it and that's why it happens. And maybe some people don't, and that's why it doesn't. But I, I really think that um, all of this stuff, no matter what kind of stuff we're talking about, anyone can do any of this stuff. You just have to really, really want it. And some people say, oh, I wish I could see a UFO. And that's all they think. They'll, they'll say it. They'll never try. They'll never sit outside. They'll never look at the sky. And then, but you keep hearing them say, oh, I wish I saw a UFO, but they don't have the time to sit, to meditate, to go outside, to read a book, to, or, you know, or the to, belief, or, or the, the belief. belief that's big part of it and you through Absolutely. your experiences but they had to have started somewhere that's the question i mean you can say it's your grandma and 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 all this kind of thing but you've got quite the number of experiences and history of going through this me i get nothing i'm envious i don't know if i'll go out tonight and go look at the stars but you know that's an encouraging thing what you say i i'd like to see it happen to me or at least something so i can have my own personal experience that i can relate with you to you type of thing anyway yeah absolutely and remember like when i was young when uri geller used to be you know the big thing bending spoons and stuff i me and my grandma like we would um she had this uh and i just got them recently the, those decks remember the old i can't remember what they're called but the, the, those old psychic decks where it was kind of looked like a Think? deck of tarot cards but it would be oh. like a, a cross a circle a square and a triangle maybe there was like maybe yeah. only like four or six signs or something like that. And then you would, you know, put it to your head like Johnny Carson or whatever. And the old days, the other <laughs> person would try it. Like you're trying to mentally give it to the other person. So like me and my grandma would do that when I was young. But I think that um, the early, the Uri Geller stuff, when he was like trying to bend a spoon or move a piece of paper. So I would sit there when I was, you know, again, very young, 10 or 11 or something with a piece of paper and like try to, you know, move the paper with my mind or try to bend the spoon with my mind or whatever. And, um, and I never did. But, um, but well, that's, your <laughs> so point. Like that's your, that's your point. At least you were trying, but you the have the inquisitive is, nature enough to try. And I think that if I, if I kept doing it, then you could, right. I think the whole thing is I didn't know that it was about that when I gave up very quickly after not being able to do it. I think I then believed, oh, Uri Geller is some special gifted person and I'm not that person. So it's never going to happen to me. And then I stopped. So I, I think that's the point. And, and then when I was like, I want to talk to my higher self because I don't want to keep paying for all these regressions. And I want to know what my higher self says about a bunch of things. So I, every single night, I all day, that's all I thought about. That's all I read about. That's all I thought about. That's all I did. I went to sleep. I was awake all night. I was doing the body asleep, mind awake, thinking about it all night, every single day for 24 seven for weeks and weeks. That's all I did. That's all I thought about. And then I started being able to do it. So it then took even years to develop that after the fact, but it's, I think that I, um, that that's just my belief is that it doesn't matter if you want to be a medium and talk to dead people. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter any of these kind of things, what you want to do, be go outside and see a UFO every single time. It doesn't matter. You have to really want it. And a lot of people say they really want it, but they don't spend the time or put in the effort to, to have it happen. They just have the feeling they really want it. And then they forget about it and go keep thinking about something else. I think if you yeah. really, really want yeah. any of this stuff to happen, think about it all the time, do things like, yeah. you know, rituals and stuff on the new moon, you write out all the things that you want, you know, and then burn the paper, like, and it doesn't, they don't have to be rituals that work. They just have to be things where you're putting your, your, your attention into it before you go to sleep. Think about it. Pretend that you have angels and ask them for it. Like, it doesn't matter whatever, but just do it all the time. Do it all the time. And it, and it'll, I think it'll just happen. I think it's, you, only, that's, that's what it is. You make me feel so boring. <laughs> <laughs> I envy you. Good for you. I know it's str a struggle all the time. It sounds like it, but you make, you make it sound very interesting. And it is. I, yeah, I want to comment about. on your, your, in, 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 you said if you have a good intention, you sort of trust it like nothing bad has gone through. I, I asked my, my teacher, a Buddhist monk, almost uh, 20 years ago about channeling practice. He said, well, as long as you have a wholesome intention, that, that's okay if you want to work with Davis. There's no rules about a black or white, right or wrong. I actually published my first Buddhist book in 1999 with a chapter on channeling with all these warnings from Sri Aurobindo, a great you know, Hindu guru saying you get a lot of mendacious advice, you know, you need someone to navigate your way through that. But I think, yeah, I think you fundamentally got it right that if you have the right in, intention, 
no, you know, you, you feel you've been, I guess, okay. Should also mention uh, close to you in uh, Thunder Bay, Ontario, there's a Buddhist monk I follow, Ashan put a demo, my, my Thai forest tradition. He wrote a recent book called The Buddhist Cosmos, which is like the book in Theravadan Buddhist history on all, all the cosmos, the devas, and all these relationships, very thick book. It's sort of a Buddhist interpretation of these same things. I'm trying to get the monks to talk about, you know, UFOs and stuff. They're kind of shy and conservative, but I think. Uh, mm -hmm. Buddhism could add a lot to this, but uh, if you ever want to make a trip from Winnipeg to Thunder Bay, it's uh, the Arrowhead River uh, Hermitage there with Ashampuna Dam. <laughs> oh, interesting. Not that far. Not that far. Not that far. Yeah, like he's a real master, and his specialty is cosmology. He's 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 renowned as the the cosmology monk. He's a Canadian monk. He's been a monk about twenty nine years. Like he's a senior Canadian monk in his cool. mid sixties. Yeah. Cool. Up in the, up you know in the boonies. <laughs> yeah, that's the boonies. And uh, Aurobindo actually went to, uh, you know, Pondicherry is a, a city in India in the um, east, uh, southeast coast of India, Pondicherry, India. And that's where Aurobindo has the big uh, kind of like commune. I actually spent uh, a week there, you know, 10 years or I guess 20 years ago, 19 years oh, wow, ago. Wow, so you were there. Wow. Yeah. And, and they have the big uh, temple and it's like uh, no talking allowed for a week or whatever. And it's all these people from around the world went and bought up different <sighs> plots of land and you can build any kind of house you want. And they have the big crystal and the big, yeah, Sri Aurobindo. That was, uh, that was my favorite plot, like part of all of the, um, the uh, places in India that I went to. Anyway. Yeah, he was awesome. a great yogi as well as a scholar. Like he could write thousands of pages, very intellectual, but also a great yogi. And he lived in the 20th century to around the 1950s, that period. So he's very special, yeah. I mean, as a Buddhist, I really appreciate some of these Hindu gurus. Yeah, yeah, me too. Super interesting. Isn't, isn't there a danger if you're trying too hard to see a UFO that you will attract the tricksters? Yeah, probably. Interesting. Yeah, I literally just had a conversation with someone about this yesterday is um, trying too hard. Okay, so it, uh, this is 100% obviously my opinion. I only know my opinion, but um, I see and have seen people in this community that are in my case. Okay, so in my opinion, um, there are people that are very, I hate to even say it. So let me think. Okay, so devious well i want to say ego driven mm. so it could be desperate as well but in in, in my uh. opinion it's about this so like if some people really in this community really want to have a story they really want to be able to connect with other people because they have a story but they want the best story they want the craziest mm. story so they are mm. so out of an ego based spot in themselves are so desperate to be connecting with something so they can go and tell everyone, I just had this communication or this, I just had this thing with this bean. I think that is the problem. And I have seen and felt energy, horrible attachments and energy from people that I think from an ego-based perspective were basically begging the universe to, to be able to have a- Big enough uh, plate. Big enough yeah. plate to serve. Yes. And, and Not Jeff. It, go, go talk to Jeff. I don't think Jeff is like that at all. I, I didn't see that interview yet, but I do have it on one of my lists. First yeah. one's the best. I, I will. I will watch it. But I, I think that the, the, if, you, if you, from a heart-based place, if you want to have a, a meeting with someone, you don't have to be desperate and you have to have your own like, protection. If you're not doing it from a, a place where you just want to have a better story than everyone else, you're trying to connect with anything. I think that definitely there is entities from the lower astral realm, which we call it in dowsing, that if you're just like, I just want to talk to anything, that is a really dangerous position to be uh -huh. in to be standing from because you can attract things that are waiting for an invitation, which is the same thing that, you know, maybe young children using a Ouija board and as being one of those when I was young as well, they don't know what they're doing. They don't know what they're playing with. And if you are just opening yourself up to anything and don't have a place where you um, know what kind of, and I don't think anyone knows what kind of proper protection there is because anyone can be taken in, in this way as well. But, um, I think that if it's coming from a loving place and you just want your own personal thing, you don't want to go tell the whole world and start, you know, 
running the lecture circuit or something or write a book or you think you're going to have a movie made about you because you have the craziest story and um and if you're coming from a place where you just want to have an experiment an experience because it's a personal experience i think that that helps and you can say i only and this is when i channel even i always say i only want anything that's of a higher vibration than i am it can, i don't like nothing coming from lower from any lower places like allowed in here or whatever and the gatekeepers are going to be my you know my spirit team or my angels or guides or whatever um i think some people that are desperate but desperate from an ego driven like they just need to be able i want to be on i want to be interviewed i want to write a book or have a movie written about me i just want something crazy to happen and then you open yourself up to yes absolutely not just tricksters but potentially actually um negative uh energy coming and attaching to you and that's a rough that's a not a place that anyone wants to um and that and that's a big thing that i learned from steve i'd also heard about this but i really put it together after talking uh, to steve by who, who was dealing with thousands of um hauntings and cases and and actually seeing firsthand what actually happens to people that you know are uh, mistreating the i don't know how to say it but like uh not appreciating this spiritual um place that that this interaction can come from and just you know um yeah hard to hard to explain it but i mean i, I there's millions of stories of people that are are really just um wanting a, a really good story and are willing to deal with any kind of entity and, and don't really know what they're dealing with and then get things attached to them and, and that's not an easy thing to get rid of so yeah i would definitely say come from a heart perspective and just do it for yourself and don't do it for anyone else and then if it turns into something that gets bigger then then good and if not then um then you're not really putting yourself at risk i don't think sounds like good advice because you're you're part of the ufo community i mean now, that's something I don't want to hog all the time, but you, you really connect all of Grant Cameron, Richard Dolan, and Tracy, all these people, maybe talk about the whole UFO community scene and what you were like. You're helping people publish books, that kind of thing. And Paul Hellier as well. You want to talk a bit about your, your, the whole UFO community scene that you work, work with? Um, well, I, um, taught, again, taught myself how to, how to know how to publish these books. Grant needed someone um, to help him because he, you know, publishes books. And um, I, you know, basically uh, figured out from, you know, watching 10 year olds on YouTube <laughs> that just teach you how to do anything that you want, basically. So I um, just figured out how to do it. And then I was doing Grant's books and that's how I started doing my own books because Grant, um, you know, suggested that I be putting my own stuff out into books since I knew how to do it. And then once you know how to self publish, I mean, there's, you know, there's so many experiencers in this community who um, want to put their own material out. And I think that a lot of people think you have to find a publisher, which is quite difficult, which takes a lot of the money away from the potential little bit of money that you're able to actually make. So when we, when I started, um, like learning how to do it, I guess I just, I don't well, you know, my name went around or whatever. I started Paula Harris. You know, I do a bunch of uh, her books, Ricardo Gonzalez, Paul Hellier, um, you know, then, and a lot of experiencers now. I just finished two experiencers, Steve Boucher, and, and both of them actually, Brian, I'll give you their names because uh, we just published their book uh, two days ago, maybe, two different experiences. Well, I've had Steve Boucher on my show. Where we yes. Were, I was born in St. Catharines, Ontario. And yes, I went to Brock that. University where he has an incredible experience. Yes, exactly. He's a good guy, that. yeah. I just published his book like maybe two or three days ago. So he has to uh, wait till he gets the copy to make sure it's good before he starts doing interviews. But him and um, uh, this guy from um, Israel, who another experiencer who Grant has interviewed. And then, so Grant like, you know, inspires people to put out their own books as long as they can write their own manuscript. And then basically, you know, my name floats around and people get in touch with me because I know how to actually do the uh, formatting. You know, you have to format it properly and then actually publish it on Amazon. Um, yeah. So, and, and then I, Paula like runs a couple of conferences, you know, she has a Starworks USA. She runs a big conference in Laughlin every year and a conference with Ricardo Gonzalez in Crestone every year. So I help her, um, you know, do some stuff in these, uh, run these uh, conferences out there. And um, I go to the Toronto one. So I help them with registration and setting stuff up before. And um, yeah, so I guess like I, uh, I don't know. <laughs> I'm around and I can help and I don't work full time. So I, you know, travel a lot and I'm out in all these places. So hey, Brian. 
I should I get her to read my poetry on your website. <laughs> well, yeah, get it published someday. Oh yeah, oh you write po yeah, like that. That's the thing is doing a self-published book is very easy, and people that think that the hardest part is trying to get a publisher. You, everything is self-published now. Almost nobody gets publishers anymore. Yeah, I've, I've published too. Then later a publisher in India took my first book for you, but a surprise, somebody wants to publish my book. But yeah, and it's, I do print on demand and yeah, it's a pretty straightforward process. Yeah. Yeah, and, and it doesn't matter if you have like a 50 page book, how to, you know, change a toilet tank. You could write a book about anything and put it on Amazon. You know, there's no one who's stopping you from doing it as long as you are fit the guidelines as in the formatting guidelines, as long as you're going to publish it so it looks good. You know, you can put, put a book out about anything. So I guess uh, Grant really inspires people to put the books out. But then once the, the manuscript is written, no one knows how to actually, you know, upload it and format and stuff. So I, I help people, um, you know, do that. There's lots of people, experiencers, but all the way up to, yeah, like uh, uh, researchers too, who normally, Richard uh, Dolan actually, of course, has his own publishing company. Um, but for the people that don't have a company and are still writing books or, or getting their books translated or whatever, actually publishing it is um, easy for me. So yeah, I spend a lot of time doing that. Okay. How about your work with uh, like Grant Cameron? You've been with him, I guess, the last four years. Just want to talk about all the things you've done. Because Grant's done a lot of work, as uh, we should mention, his YouTube channel is White House UFO, right? Yep. Yeah, want to tell us, the audience, a bit more about Grant? Because a lot of people, of course, watching this are, are new to ufology, maybe, they don't know that much about it. Yeah, Grant has been doing this since the 70s, since he saw uh, Charlie Red Star. Um, so he's, uh, yeah, like lectures internationally. Um, Grant is really uh, great because he gets obsessed with uh, different topics within the UFO field and um, spends a couple months being obsessed and, and what he calls going down the rabbit hole of different subjects. So we get um, many different uh, interviews of people who are working on these kind of things that he's checking out. And so we are, we do lots of interviews of people and uh, meet a lot of people and um, he changes his lecture. So, you know, this is a bad year because all the conferences got canceled this year, but generally if he talks at say 10 conferences a year, um, he'll have 10 di totally different, 100% different lectures for that year because he's constantly changing and updating PowerPoints, books, constantly writing books, um, and constantly changing his focus and area of, of what he's interested in or whatever. So yeah, White House UFO is the name of the YouTube channel. So we post many, many. I post at least three interviews per week. We do interviews all the time. And um he does his own personal PowerPoints as well that he might be doing at a conference or whatever. And then we'll, we'll film him doing the PowerPoint. So some of them are him, you know, in his personal lectures or him at conferences and, and, but most of the stuff on that channel is interviews. So we have traveled to many conferences driven across all across North, like from Winnipeg to Mount Shasta in California or down to the Ozarks or whatever. Um, in Arkansas and uh, going to conferences and just like meeting up with people, the other researchers, you know, talking and, and hanging out with the other researchers and hearing their stories and their new research and what they're doing or meeting experiencers at those conferences and hearing their stories and then interviewing them in the future and uh, then hearing who has a book to publish. And it's like, it's quite a circuit of um, meeting people and changing, you know, networking, I guess, with people, hearing their stories and what everyone's working on and what the new, things are, what the new books are, who the new, you know, speakers are, what the new areas that people are getting interested in or whatever. It's, um, yeah, my whole year this year was supposed to be traveling for conferences and unfortunately it all got canceled. A work in progress with an insatiable appetite. <laughs> yes, exactly. Well, Grant, he's been a big influence on me, like uh, one of my, you know, few highest UFO info. So yeah, he's, he's another one of these people with a steel trap memory. Like he, been around at this since 1975. I remember he said uh, he went from think of UFOs as nuts and bolts to more like consciousness. He said that transfer. Remember you and him were here for 10 hours at the house in 2017. I was saying, hey Grant, I published a book, uh, my book uh, in 1999, a chapter called Buddhism and UFOs. Back then I was saying, well, from a Buddhist view, it, it is about consciousness, the devas, our relationship with devas. Hey, I've been saying that for 20 years. So I, I appreciate he's, he's, uh, his thesis is more about he says it's about the experiencers. It's not about you no know, flying saucers. It's about the yeah. experiences and about consciousness. So I really appreciate you know you you and him are going you know down those rabbit holes and expressing that you know.
Yeah, he, he was definitely one of the first uh, people that were um, on the more, you know, his, his old uh, website, we're still trying to kind of fix it, but I think you can, I think it's still up there called presidentialufo.com. He had the biggest website. He was the, you know, world expert on presidents and UFOs. So any of the FOIAs that were ever taken, any experience that any president had ever had, CIA, that, that's, that's, Grant is the, um, you know, world renowned expert at presidents and UFOs. And um, he had a crazy website that we, we, you know, we spent years trying to convert and uh, had a zillion problems with it. So I don't even know what the state of it is right now, but he has like the biggest uh, collection. He goes and um, when we travel together, we go to all the archives. So whatever archives are in whatever state um, that we're going to of, uh, you know, archives of anything to do with UFOs or any paranormal stuff, really, we go and like, you know, spend days and days photographing, you know, 10,000 pages of information of what are in the files that are in people's personal archives. Um, so, uh, yeah, so he's very big on collecting documents and going through things to try and find what, uh, you know, people in the government, the higher up in the government, uh, what they have and, and, and letters that have gone between presidents and psychics or presidents and the remote viewing people or, or something and like, why is there communication between these, you know, strange groups of people, but it's always, it used to always be within the government. And so he was very nuts and bolts and government and what does the government know? And uh, he had a download and I'm sure it was 2012 that kind of started making him uh, reevaluate the importance of the experiencer side of things and um, you know the more I guess paranormal or consciousness uh, based side of things as aside from just what people know because you're never going to know what they really know because they're not they're going to declassify um, some of these documents right like ever we're never going to be able to see and if they do they redact half of it anyway so so um, I guess he kind of realized that from an experiencer point of view, there's more information that can be gained from the very strange, but patterned of, uh, you know, with tens or, or hundreds of thousands of people that have seen very similar stuff. So when you start seeing patterns, even though you can't say it's scientifically backed all the time, you can tell that from people all around the world having the same uh, experiences, there has to be something to that. So he's kind of gone in that direction. You think that the reason why that happens, people going to the government, is because they have unanswered questions and the authority that they've always respected is the government and that's where you're going to find most of those stories, at least something that you can find that way, yeah. Absolutely, and I think, it, well, and I think maybe it's even more from a long time ago than now because now even though the Pentagon can come out with some of these stories, the Washington Post and New York Times goes and says the Pentagon's releasing all this information, UFOs, you know, like the Tic Tac stuff, the TTSA yeah. stuff. It's like people don't even care. So I, I don't know so much that I think that used to be when people had um, more trust in the government, they would go yeah. to the government thinking that, that the government must know what the truth is and they have to be, you know, disclosing this information to us. But I think since you know, since even when the government releases some of this information and it goes in the Washington Post, the New York Times, it's like people still don't care. People don't notice. Half the people don't even know that it came out. It's not picked up by the mainstream media. They still don't run with it. People still don't believe it, even though, you know, it's actually Pentagon released information. So Curiosity. You know, it's gone. Or, or people don't believe. Oh, I don't know if it's not, it's not taken to the mainstream and it's like people are so busy that they Jaded. think that it has to be front page of every paper in the entire world for an entire year for them to believe it. And if it's only a big story for a couple of days and they happen to miss it, they either don't believe it or don't hear about it or think that it still has to be a conspiracy theory because it seems so far out. So I yeah, think that it's yeah. so, so many different, um, things that and a lot of people don't trust trust the government anymore so no one knows if, if they're actually releasing the truth or not and for a lot of experiencers nobody needs you know to wait for the government to tell you there's ufos if you've seen a ufo you don't need you know any president to be standing up there saying that this stuff is really true it's like we all already you know it's not going to make a difference to me if the president comes out and says ufos are real like we already you know, like in the, in this community, we already know that disclosure is already happening through people coming forward and talking about all their experiences. And if you've had any experiences, like, why would you need the government? Who would you go to as a new experiencer? Not that you are, but in your mind, what would a new experiencer 
try to solve, who would a new experiencer try to solve his questions with? Groups like Brian's group, like yourself, go to people who have already gone down the road and then try to find your own path or road along with it. Absolutely. Everything. I think, yeah. And we have a, a grant has, um, and, and any of your people too can uh, send me an email. You can share my email. Uh, grant has a rabbit hole group as well for experiencers. So it's, um, and you know, this group, there's groups all over the place, meet UFO meetup groups and, and anyone can get attached to these groups and just hear other experiencers talk. And I think the main part of it is that a lot of people don't have people to talk to, like Brian, you were saying at the beginning, um, that I was lucky that my family, you know, was interested or didn't think I was crazy at least. Involved of, even. Yes, and, and, and involved. And a lot of people, um, especially from different backgrounds and, and maybe a lot of religious backgrounds that, that literally don't believe in this and think that this is a bad demonic, you know, so they shun the family members who would even be talking about stuff like this. And so a lot of people that we meet and we meet them all the time, like all over the place, like all over the country, when we go to these, um, these conferences that people literally have never been allowed to talk about them with their family because they, or their church has heard that they've said that they saw something and they're, they're going to get like, you know, kicked out of the church, kicked out of their family. They're not allowed to talk about stuff like this. So a lot of people, um, not even necessarily new experiencers, but a lot of people that have been experiencing this for 60 years, but have never had anyone to talk to about it. I think these groups are the exact thing that everyone should be turning to, because at least you can meet like-minded people, see that there's other people that have the exact same story as you. YouTube is filled with these, uh, um, just if you wanted to just like sit back and watch, but I mean, being part of some of these groups and joining up, you know, you don't have to live in the same city where you join up to a UFO group like this. I'm sure you guys would accept people who are not from Vancouver and who just no want to join in on these meetings. <laughs> 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 and so, yeah, definitely these to, to talk to other people and in the chat, you know, like we do grants rabbit hole and uh, people just chat in the chat to together, put their email addresses they see someone's story they say can you contact me privately and then people just get to be friends with other people in the community by this way and uh, can share stories and then at least they have someone to talk to about this kind of stuff so this i would definitely say this and then you can say like, what's your favorite books what are other books like this and you just share information and and yeah th this is definitely the the where disclosure is happening is in these small um private meetup groups and and private um why would you know, anybody why would anybody watch TV if they can do things like this? <laughs> this is I weird. Haven't had, I haven't had cable TV in over a decade and um, I never watch anything. Yes, I, I watch lectures and YouTube videos about this kind of stuff before I go to sleep and definitely in the time frame of when I used to sit and watch TV at night. Yeah, I can't it's just even... useless. It's useless yes. to you, especially. Absolutely. You got a lot to do and a lot to think about. <laughs> and if any of us are bright enough, we'll do the same. Yeah. Yeah. And, and having enough friends like this that you meet in places like this, I mean, wouldn't you rather be talking to someone about the book you just read or the, an experience or anything than watching some, especially now, I mean, God, I can't relate to like basically any TV show or movie or anything anymore. That's all I used to do. I used to be in the, in the music industry, I used to run a bunch of, uh, you know, CD and DVD stores. And I thought that that was like my whole life is knowing what new band came out and going to see shows and watching every single solitary movie that ever came out. And it's like, I, I can't relate to, to any of that kind of stuff anymore. I yeah, remember Grant said he worked in the mu music business before. It's kind of, that's what it was. And also you have a science degree is at the University of Winnipeg. Mm -hmm. you. you mentioned yeah. that Grant had these uh, like download around 2012. Is this kind of like a spiritual channeling type experience that Grant Cameron had himself? Yep. And that's what kind of led him into the consciousness aspect of this whole thing. But he had, um, he had a download, he had, he's had a, a handful of downloads now, but he had a download that it was just, um, there was, you know, more um, things connected to this whole uh, reality than, than just chasing presidents and trying to get the nuts and bolts stuff uh, out of this, right? That there's connections made between certain things. And, you know, Grant and I just published this, uh, this new book called Contact Modalities. And this is kind of, um, kind of based, not based on his original download, but kind of uh, maybe accumulation of, of a handful of his downloads of connecting how people can get to these trance-like states and be able to connect with the other side. So whether it's the other side being ETs or spirits or, you know, whatever you want to say, but um, 
different modalities that people can use to enter this this state of mind where you can then try to um, have some kind of communication or contact with beings in the invisible world, let's just say. So, um, and that's kind of what some of his downloads have been about is that um, the stuff is all connected and there's no difference between a channeler or a medium or a C5 group or uh, someone using tarot cards or dowsing or chanting, drumming, shaman, psychedelics, all of these um, different aspects of this community are all uh, different places and modalities that people can use to be able to actually connect to um to whatever we're talking about right the phenomena the other side the the ets or or whatever i just want to share with the audience though the big experience that grant had one of his famous experience he phoned i don't know he was on a radio show with sitting vice president dick cheney the show had nothing to do with ufos he phones and he says have you ever been briefed on ufos has anyone ever come into your office and gotten you to sign a document that you've been briefed by ufos and the vice president of the united states says well it's about ufos that that's classified and you can't discuss it. So right away, that shows this isn't important. It's classified. It's a real phenomena. And Grant Cameron said, well, if he said he saw a UFO, it doesn't matter. He said he believes in it, it doesn't matter. But the fact that Vice President of the United States, did you sign a document stating that you've been briefed on UFO? Very, very good question. That's what made Grant Cameron, Cameron more famous. <laughs> so I really appreciate him waiting in this radio show for hours to get through the Vice President. <laughs> Yeah, that's a, that's a good story. <laughs> yeah, that's a really good story because it's true. You ha he had to, he's brilliant to be able to have come up with the, the very specific question that, that knowing whatever the outcome of the answer would be, would tie the government to uh, being, knowing that they know what it, what's happening or whatever. So yeah, that was, that was a big, uh, that was a good, uh, <laughs> good move for Grant. <laughs> and glad he got in to be able to say that, to ask the question. Is anyone else? Gordy, any other questions, comments, you guys? Zach, um, Desta, does Grant believe that there is a deep state that's um, back engineering or uh, involved with a secret space program? Uh, have you heard his uh, take on that? He doesn't really. He thinks that um, that because he, you know, he follows people in the CIA. I don't know if I should say yeah. the names, but you know, the, 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 the top people there in the CIA, Hal put off Kit Green, Gary Nolan, Ron, uh, Ron Pandolfi, all those people. Um, he's, he's been involved slightly in um, some, this guy, Joe Firmage, who was trying to um, levitate the, it was called the bouncing box. So these scientists that the CIA is involved and, and some of the people that, you know, used to be in NIDS, and bat and bass and all these govern and skinwalker ranch and you know the uh program um, the remote viewing programs project stargate all these top people in the cia have have um gone private and been involved in a lot of these um different programs and stuff and um and and his point of view is that they are still trying to do like have a anti-gravity device enough that it's a very, like a, a box this big, like a very small box that is trying to levitate off the table and they can't do that. So his, he's saying that if these top level people that are spending million, hundreds of millions of dollars to put in to try to get some kind of anti-gravitic device working, he thinks how in the world, if they really, even if it's a black budget program and these people don't know about it, can we really go to places like Mars if if these top level CIA people who've been involved in this program forever can't even levitate a box off a table? His point of view is that how could we really have gone so much past that to the point of where we're actually sending people, you know, to Mars very frequently? That's his perspective. Mm -hmm. What does CIA mean? Not reveal all all their knowledge yeah. or secrets too. Um, For sure. Uh, uh, you know, Dolan talks about a breakaway civilization. If they're, they have this technology, they may not want to share it with everybody or other countries. So yeah. um, we're not going to get the, uh, the truth from the government often, yeah. especially the deep state. You know, Grant, Grant agrees with that. His, his point is just that from what we know, most of these high level people that he's been following forever have never said anything about that kind of stuff and they can't even do very basic um, 
Mm. You know, they, they're not because using it even very basically. But of what course, is Grant, he doesn't know. Uh, uh, sorry, what does Grant think of Bob Lazar's uh, account at Area 51 that he saw UFOs levitating there and that he worked on um, propulsion systems with gravity, um, craft that had anti-gravity capabilities? He, he definitely knows that the back engineering has been, they've been working on that for a long time. But yeah. he has, you know, and I can't, I shouldn't possibly really even be speaking for Grant because I don't, you know, okay. I know him, but I don't want to say okay. something, but, but he, he believes the Bob Lazar story. He definitely thinks the government's been working on reverse engineering these UFOs and, and all of this stuff for a long time. But he also, you know, he, he, he has statements and I, you know, don't have them off the top of my head, but I mean, he would say that. He has a handful of statements that they've done, that they've made these top level people that have basically said like you know they've tried to be working on these you know uh, UFOs and trying to back engineer them for decades and decades and they had to step away from them because they had no idea they had zero idea how it actually worked we're not at the point they said yet where they could even figure out how to be doing this stuff so um, even though they know it and even the Colonel Corso stuff where. You know, they were, you know, saying that those lenses, the black lenses on the eyes that they pulled off of the grays or whatever, that the course said that they were using to, and they could see through the walls of the Pentagon, right? So, so I don't think Grant, Grant knows that the technology is out there and that we've recovered some of the technology, but to actually be able to back engineer and, and recreate and have a flying saucer, you know, there's not enough stuff that these top level people have said, I think, that makes them believe that, you know, mm -hmm. we're basically you know, having UFOs that we're sending to Mars kind of.